Good day. Today we will be machining a new lathe dog for uh, my Cosmos metal lathe because um, the one that I have for the Amco Unimat is most of the time a little bit too small for the stock I want to be turning and also uh, the sizes or the length of the carrier um, are not quite uh, the ones I would like to have it. So yeah, we'll be now um, taking this I think it's uh, 35 or 50 millimeter stock. We'll be taking it down to a round diameter and um, then we will proceed on with uh, drilling and tapping a thread in there for the uh, mounting screw and also uh, bending a piece of metal to shape so that it will um, act as a carrier. So yeah, I hope you'll enjoy it and um, let's go. Well, since you saw the lathe last time in the video about this lathe, um, I had to make a new tool post because the old one um, was falling apart. Uh, the T-nut below this and uh, the mounting part were made out of two parts and uh, since I put a hex screw in there to be able to clamp with more force than the original thumb screw, um, this thing, well, these two parts uh, separated from each other, so I made a new one out of one single part, turned this diameter, and then um, at my neighbor's workshop, I uh, milled the slot in the middle to um, make the two fit. All right, since we are turning a large diameter, I will be using a lower speed. So we'll just switch for that lower setting here. There we go. Put the wedge in. Tighten the belts. That's okay. And we will start machining. Now creating a round diameter and then we will see what size we want to make the base uh, dark. Got it trued up now, and we'll just take a measurement here. That's right at uh, 40 millimeters, and um, to allow some um, place for the carrier left, I'd say we will rough it down to 35 millimeters. It's not a critical measurement; it's, it's just the out, uh, outer side, outside diameter for the part. to proceed by um, drilling the hole so that we can later bore it. Well, since 
well, my machine is pretty tough, but it's not the most rigid of all, and so I still have problems with parting, especially because the speeds on this machine are still quite on the high side. So um, what I came up with was an idea I got via YouTube. Um, I drilled a hole completely once through the spindle and then put a bolt through there, that's this one. And I found a crank with this lip on here which perfectly engages into the spindle and also locks into the slot. So now I can part through the through the piece just using the crank and gradually feeding in by hand. Alright, that's as far as the tool will go in and uh, we're going to do the last few millimeters, I think it's like two millimeters left or so and um, we're going to do that with a hacksaw and uh, you just notice how much the motor is really doing for you when you uh, spend like, I don't know, 20 minutes on the crank I guess I need a little bit more training in the arm <laughs> Alright, there's our part. The uh, finish is reasonably good considering that I was doing that per hand. Um, yeah, that last, well, I'd say three millimeters, four millimeters, that was just the hacksaw finish, and that was really literally no more than two minutes of work now. Alright, so we'll proceed facing now. Can you see why I love boring so much? Entire chucks inside is now a crud of chips and dirt. Well, it's an old chuck, but still I want to keep it in as good condition as I can, so yep, we'll take it apart, clean it up and put it back together again. Another point where the crank comes in very handy because um, when you machine stuff like this and this is held on by a thread then this tends to tighten on it pretty tightly so what you can do is use the crank and this okay I'm, I'm an idiot I'm tightening it, tightening it right now so this way and now it's loose and we can screw it off there we go 
Yeah, everything is full of chips. So yeah, happy cleaning. Okay, the uh, turning part is finished by now. And the next thing will be um, drilling the two holes, one for the thread for the holder or for the mounting screw and uh, the other hole for the carrier. Okay, here we are. Um, for the carrier we are going to use this old nail. I'm just going to s saw or grind off um, the tip and the head and we'll bend it to shape. And this has um, 4.5 millimeter diameter. Okay, as you can imagine, I don't have the money for all these fancy tapping hats and stuff like that. So I'm going to be using the little man's tapping hat, which is just a chuck on the drill press. Put this back in the vise and stuck a drill in there to make it as straight as I could. I'm just going to all this a little bit. Started. All right, we'll finish it up. This is a small hole, so you don't need to back the tap off. All right, there we go. We're through. Perfect M6 thread, if you can see it, which I doubt. Okay, last operation, soldering the thing on. very final step is now going to be filing a notch into the bottom so uh, the parts will get a seat in there Here's the finished product. Put a bolt in the top, and here's the notch that we filed into there. And um, yeah, let's see how it is in action. All right, here we go. Mounted the lathe dog, and it's working perfectly. Right before we get a chip disaster here, I'll just stop the lathe. And as you saw, it just worked perfectly fine. So there we go. Our lathe dog 
is doing very well and it's not that, that hard to machine actually mainly because there are not at all any critical dimensions on there I mean the ones you can buy they are usually made out of cast iron and there is no machining on them except for the thread jump on the corner. So there we are. Perfect, perfectly working blade dog. Thanks for watching.